but it is my pleasure now to welcome Laura Muir from the Cancer Council of New South Wales, who's going to speak to us about uh, the sort of support services, legally and financially, that the Cancer Council can offer. Thank you. everyone, just before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people that may be here today and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. I'm here to talk to you today. So my name is Laura Muir. I'm a pro bono case manager at Cancer Council in New South Wales. So I, um, there's a range of information and support services offered by Cancer Council in New South Wales and the legal and financial support services team administered two programs that I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, so within the legal and fini financial support services team, there's a pro bono program and a financial assistance service. And so I really want to highlight the practical assistance that's available through those programs to people affected by cancer. So I'll start by talking through the Cancer Council Pro Bono Program. So we run this program nationally from our New South Wales office. It's a referral service, so clients are referred into our program by health professionals, so oncology nurses, social workers, that sort of thing. Um, or they can self-refer by contacting our information and support line on 13 11 20 and talking through the kinds of practical issues that they need help with. Um, so, basically the program connects people affected by cancer with professionals in the community who volunteer their time and expertise to assist people with those um, legal, financial, workplace or small business issues. Um, and so I'll unpack that a little bit uh, further in a minute. But really the aim of the program is to help alleviate stress uh, associated with a practical issue. Um, so really that professional wants to step in and take away take on that issue for that client so that they can focus on their health and well-being um, and focus, make that pr their priority. So within the Cancer Council Pro Bono Program, there's four referral services, so four types of professionals who are providing their advice through the program. So the first one is the legal referral service. So basically that exists for people with legal issues which are associated with or made harder by their cancer diagnosis. And so typically through that service, we see um, people requesting help with wills and powers of attorney, um, insurance disputes. And when we're talking earlier about insurance, it made me think of a particular case um, that we had a couple of years ago. We had a young woman in her 20s who had brain cancer who was referred through to our program. We actually spoke to her father because she wasn't able to so, sort of channel her energy into dealing with the issue she had, which was an insurance dispute. So she um, had applied to access her insurance um, and her insurer had denied her claim um, because of a technicality. I can't remember the specifics, but it was that the cancer was on her brain, not in her brain, and for that reason they denied her claim. Um, and so we connected her with a pro bono lawyer who then took that issue on, advocated on her behalf and was eventually successful um, in having those funds released for her. Um, and so they were able to take that issue on and reduce the stress associated with it and achieve a really positive outcome for that client. Um, they can also help with, lawyers can help with early access to superannuation, consumer credit debt matters, um, discrimination and employment law. Um, through our financial planning referral service, we've got financial planners who are really trying to help people to find another source of income, so be that through superannuation and insurance, Centrelink, um, managing lump sum payments that they might have been successful in um, having released, and looking at debt management. 
through our workplace advisory service, we've got HR professionals as well as recruitment professionals who help people manage uh, their cancer diagnosis in their employment context. So do I have to disclose my diagnosis? How do I do that? How do I manage expectations? How do I manage side effects of treatment in the workplace if I am going to continue to work? And then um, returning to work after cancer. So looking at how to draft a CV, how to ex explain a gap in your employment due to treatment, that sort of thing. And really all these services I should highlight are accessible to cancer patients and carers. Um, so similarly carers are impacted in the workplace having to take time off to um, take people to appointments, that sort of thing. So looking at what flexible working arrangements are available um, and also returning to work um, after they've uh, finished their caring responsibilities and are able to return to the workforce. And then the Small Business Advisory Service is small business accountants helping people to typically sole traders to manage the disruption to their business um, during their cancer treatment. So our service for the Cancer Council Pro, Pro Bono Program is means tested. Um, so it really is a holistic uh, assessment of that person's ability to afford the cost of advice. Um, and we have a very broad range of people coming through the program. We have people who you might think are quite clearly um, eligible. We ha definitely have people who are um, you know, receiving Centrelink payments, might be living in Department of Housing. Similarly, we also have people who may have been doing quite well financially before, but due to the impact of the, well, the financial impact of their cancer diagnosis, they may be in a position where they've fallen behind on their mortgage payments, they've lost their breadwinning income, and in that regard, they're in financial hardship and they would qualify for free assistance through our program. So we do it on a case-by-case -case basis. We don't have a stringent legal aid means test so that we can be flexible and take into account the full situation of that person. Um, so we help cancer patients, carers and bereaved carers. Um, the issue that they're experiencing needs to be related to or hard to, harder to solve because of their cancer diagnosis. They mustn't already be seeing a professional for that assistance. So if they're already seeing a lawyer to manage their employment law issue, we can't then connect them with an employment lawyer because they've already, they're already receiving that assistance. So we want to fill that unmet need where people don't have access. Um, and so as I said, the individual must, be able to un must not be able to afford the cost of advice. So we also take into account the person's financial situation and the estimated commercial cost of the advice that they're seeking because obviously, you know, assistance making a will as a one-off thing may be cheaper than extensive employment law advice, that sort of thing. Um, just looking at our impact, um, so where we had an evaluation in 2015 which looked at um, were we meeting the need that we were setting out to address and we were happy to hear that people have reported st statistically significantly lower levels of stress and worry about their practical issues. Um, so that's really positive in terms of our program direction. Um, in the last calendar year, we had three, over 3,000 clients referred with more matters than that. So people don't just have legal issues, they might have legal and financial issues. Um, we have more than 1,100 organisations, so law firms, financial planning practices, HR teams, etc., involved in the program nationally. Um, and the estimated commercial cost of advice given by those professionals in the program in 2018 was more than $5 million. Um, so that's just sort of a snapshot of our impact and our reach. And then just turning to the financial assistance service. Um, so this um, service sits alongside the pro bono program in the legal and financial support services team. And there's three main components to this. The first is the emerg emergency financial assistance. So this is for people who are in immediate and acute financial hardship. Um, and so payment, uh, sorry, vouchers for food, petrol, utilities, that sort of thing can be provided um, typically to a limit of $350 um, to help people to manage those expenses that really don't stop just because you're um, going through a cancer diagnosis and treatment. Um, the second component of that service is financial counselling. So Cancer Council New South Wales provides financial counselling to um, 
people who are perhaps looking to make a budget to ensure that they can meet their expenses. Um, they'll also act as um, an advocate to negotiate with creditors in relation to debts that people might be um, managing and might not be able to service. They might uh, not be working due to the cancer treatment. So um, really looking at how to manage your financial situation um, in light of that. And then the third component is a relatively new aspect of what we're doing, and it's the Home Help Program. So this is money that's provided up to $350 uh, to help people with domestic cleaning or gardening, gardening around the house. Um, and so this payment's made directly to a service provider that's chosen by the client. So um, someone picks a cleaner, engages their services, Cancer Council will provide money um, for that service. Looking at the impact of the financial assistance service in the last financial year. Um, so when I said before about people being in acute financial hardship, um, it's important, I guess, to recognise that 80% of clients who um, sought financial assistance were people who were already in receipt of Centrelink payments. Um, there were 2,850 clients received uh, they applied for emergency financial assistance um, and they were provided with a total of $943,000 um, in payments last financial year. The financial counsellors at Cancer Council in New South Wales, um, they counselled 144 clients and they were successful in waiving 163, almost $164,000 in debts um, for people affected by cancer. So that really touches on the um, role, their role to advocate and negotiate with creditors in relation to debts, hardship variations and waivers. And then the Home Help was a pilot program. Um, as I mentioned, it was quite new. It was a localised pilot program and it saw 259 clients enrolled and uh, sorry, $34,000 in payments received um, for these services, so domestic cleaning and gardening. In terms of referral pathways, so people affected by cancer can be referred to the pro bono program or the financial si assistance service or one of the other uh, programs and services that Cancer Council provides um, by contacting 13 11 20, our information and support line, or um, a health professional, so a social worker, oncology nurse, um, what have you, can submit a referral using our form um, via email or fax. We'll then open up that referral and contact that client directly to talk through exactly what kind of help they need. That's all from me today. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Laura, I'm wondering if perhaps... Rather than questions, if people could go on to the... Uh, the site, the yep. Cancer Council of New South Wales site, or phone your 13 number mm -hmm. and have direct uh, contact about their individual problem that might be helpful. But yep. thank you for such a succinct overview of the <laughs> services and uh, thank goodness we've got the Cancer Council of New South Wales helping so many people. <laughs>